everybody, my name is Maddie, and welcome back to Wyan Adventures. Today, we'll be reading uh, Tis the Season, Bernard the Elf X Reader by Elizabeth Smith, 260897. I have not watched The Santa Claus in probably, oy, like, 10 years, and even then I didn't pay attention. I don't know what we're in for, I don't know if it's out of character, I don't know what's going on. Uh, before we start, though, I just want to give my usual disclaimer here that we're not here to make fun of anybody, um, and I'm asking you to please not go and leave any hate on the original fic or send the author any, you know, negativity at all. Um, we're all just here to have fun and a good time. All right, and with that, let's dive into it. Chapter 1. What? Bernard yelled, drawing everyone's attention to the workshop, quickly pulling himself together, giving the elves a toothy smile. It's nothing, folks. Get back to work now, he ordered before leaning closer to Santa, whispering, Sir, I don't know that is such a good idea. A member of the naughty list at the poll. Not to mention the SOS, sir, Curtis adds, joining Bernard's side. Guys, this is my niece we're talking about. She's a sweet person. Just a little misguided right now. This will be good for her. Besides, she already knows I'm Santa, he chimes, walking through the workshop, making his way to his office. Bernard shut his office door quickly as Santa hands the letters to Curtis. Sir, I understand she is your niece, but no, no buts, Bernard. I was called it Gerard. <laughs> oh. No buts, Bernard. She's my family and she needs me. I spoke to Carol, and she thinks it's a good idea, and Jake is on board with it. The elves glance at each other with furrowed brows. Who's Jake? My brother, he reiterates. Look, I just want you guys to assign her to something. The kitchen, stables, anything. Just give her a job to do. Sir, this is the North Pole, not a reform camp. Scott sighs, sitting in his chair, pinching the bridge of his nose. Guys, please, just go with me on this. Trust me, she needs this. The elves look at each other, Bernard taking the letters and scanning them briefly. Okay, we'll help, but I still don't know about this. Bernard surrenders, making his boss smile. Thank you guys, you won't regret this. Bernard and Curtis give each other knowing looks. Scott is already running out of his office. They follow him to the stables where he is already asking Sally, the head of stables, to get two reindeer ready for him. How do you think this is going to work out? Curtis asks, nudging Bernard. I really don't know, he mumbled, concern washed over his face. What? She shrieked, staring at her father in horror, slightly shaking her head. I think it will only benefit you, he says, getting her bag. Hold on, I get I've had a few Fs, but sending me away is a bit extreme, she yells, yanking her bag back. Her father, in a sigh, goes to grab some clothes for her. It's not just that, YN. I'm really worried about you. I think this could help you. Besides, it's not like I'm sending you away to some camp. It's the North Pole. Uncle Scott will take care of you. She sits on her bed, watching her father put away her things in some bags he found. Dad, I don't want to go to Munchkin Land, she huffs, but he ignores her with a heavy heart, knowing this is exactly what she needs. The doorbell rings, making her heart drop. That must be your uncle. Oh god, we're getting sold the One Direction again. Not again. That must be your uncle, her dad mumbles, putting her things down on the bed next to her. She can hear them catching up at the door. In a groan, she walks out of her room, listening to them from the top of the stairs, hugging her knees. Her uncle turns to make his way up the stairs and freezes when he sees her. Hey, kiddo. Look, I know this may seem bad. Just try to understand. We're trying to help you. Why? Because I'm on some stupid list. Does it make Santa look bad? She grumbles, going back to her room. Sorry, Scott. Ever since Margaret and I... Scott nodded. I understand. It's a confusing time. Oh, no! <laughs> he reasons, going up the stairs and knocking on her door. Kiddo, can I come in? After a few seconds of silence, he took that as a yes. And opened the door slowly. She sat on her bed, looking at a family photo. Hey... This is because we only want you being the best version of you you can be. He sits next to her, looking down at the old photo. It's not your fault, you know. The divorce. It had nothing to do with you, he comforted, wrapping his arm around her. When do we leave? 
Well, since it's day before the Christmas season, we're pretty busy. So as soon as you're packed, she nods, looking towards the bags. Dad did it before you got here. He nodded and grabbed the bags for her, holding out his hand for her to take. She takes it grudgingly and headed down the stairs. Her father hugged her goodbye, and they went to Comet and Prancer outside. Ever ride a reindeer? he asks. Should I have? Oh, this is great. He laughed, and together they rode to the pole. Admittedly bumpily, rode to the pole. Chapter 2 Curtis and Bernard stood anxiously, waiting for Santa and his niece to arrive. Curtis started to pick at his nails, as Bernard's eyes never left the stable entrance, his hands behind his back fiddling with his sweater sleeve. What if this backfire? Curtis asks abruptly. Then we will help Santa fix it, like we always do. An awkward silence settled between them again, until Curtis points out that they are in view. The reindeer land expertly, and they go to help them to the ground. Curtis reaches his hand out to Scott, while Bernard holds out his hands to Y.N. She takes his hand but slips as she tries to get her foot out of the saddle, making her fall into Bernard, <laughs> landing safely in the snow. Sorry, you okay? She grumbles. Bernard looks at her, wide-eyed. His heart started to beat fast, and his breath started to cinch. Dude, you okay? She asks, narrowing her eyes. Her uncle comes over and helps her up, as Curtis helps Bernard up. You guys okay? I should have told you that saddle tends to hook your boots. He chuckles, dusting off his niece, glancing at Bernard. Bernard, you okay? He asks, who finally breaks from his trance. What? Yes, yes, I am good. Great, thank you, Santa. <laughs> Sorry, my voice broke there at like the perfect time. <laughs> Scott and Curtis give him and each other a weird, confused look. Okay, uh, guys, this is my niece, YN. YN, this is Bernard, the head elf, and Curtis, our second. Curtis immediately shakes her hand and Bernard shakes her other hand with a small smile. Good to meet you, she mumbles, looking around the village. So, this is the North Pole, huh? Oh, this is just the stable. The shop is much more impressive, not to mention the village. It's breathtaking. Well, I would love to see whichever is warmer, she mumbles, and the three guide her inside. They show her every piece of the workshop, the elves saying a hi every time they pass, and this is the letters room, where you'll work. You'll read what the kids want and mark it down. Sort them however you see fit, Bernard instructs proudly. He keeps his head high throughout the entire tour. He has this confidence with the other elves, with his work that Wyan admired. Sounds fun, she grumbles, and Bernard smiles, not picking up on her sarcasm. Since we heard you're coming, we thought you would appreciate your own place to stay. So Curtis and I took the liberty of making you a place to stay. Scott gains a hopeful glint in his eye. Wow, Bernard, you heard she was coming this yesterday morning, he says as they make their way down to the village. Next to the village cafe, is a small little cabin room for one, maybe two, if you don't mind small spaces. Wow, you guys built this in a day? They nod proudly as they watch her look at the cabin in awe. You guys are incredible. Nah, we used a basic gingerbread house layout is all. Curtis beams. Nice job, guys. This is great. The paint manship is spectacular. Scott praises as he goes inside. Curtis not far behind him. Wyan stayed behind, still looking at her precious cabin. You going in? Bernard asks. Just admiring, she mumbled. He put his hand on the small of her back, making her stomach flutter. I promise it's not going away. They head inside together. Running water, electricity, the fireplace should warm the whole place for a cabin this size, he informs. She looks around in awe. Bernard can't help but wonder what she did to end up on the naughty list. Ah, oh, she killed the guy, Bernard, sorry. She seems nice enough. They always do, don't they, buddy? Sarcastic, sure, but she seems sweet. Maybe she just needs a friend, he thinks, hopefully, showing her around. Chapter 3 Wyan settles in that night, looking around her cabin, hopefully. She can't help but think maybe this won't be too bad. As she sat, looking at her fireplace, her mind would wander back to Bernard. The way he would have a confidence throughout the workshop... The way he naturally took control of his space, and yet was still polite. The way he would guide her, the butterflies reappeared in her stomach as she thought back to it. She soon fell asleep, cuddled up on her sofa, 
the dancing flames comforting her. The next morning, a knock at her door startled her awake. She opened it, wincing at the brightness of the snow. Hello, she grumbles, leaning on the doorway. Good morning. She starts to become more awake at the sound of Bernard's voice, trying to push down her crazy hair. Hi, what, what's up? It's your first day of work. Thought I made sure you were there. She nods, looking unenthused. I brought Coco, he adds, shaking the drink slightly, making her giggle. She opened her door more and he stepped in. How did the bed work out? Warm enough? We weren't sure how you're used to things. He calls as she goes and get dressed. He looks around awkwardly. It was a bit cold, but I slept by the fire and I was good. She called through the muffled bedroom door. He nods, subconsciously telling himself to get her more blankets and make sure she subscribes to the log route. That way, she never runs out. She walks out in a thick coat and he laughs to himself. What? She asked. Nothing. I. It's just I rarely see those. We're all used to the cold. She looks down at her coat. Should I change? She asks, her voice dripping with honey, making Bernard's heart melt. No, I promise you look good, as long as you're comfortable. They walk together to work, sipping their cocoa in silence. So, my uncle sent you to get me? Uh, no. I thought you could use the company, he says absentmindedly. Really, you just surrender your morning so I could have cocoa, she asks skeptically. He stops and turns to her. No, I surrender my morning so you would be more comfortable. He smirks and continues to the workshop. She nods with a small smile and continues to sip her cocoa. The day goes by and she reads about 200 letters. She had two other elves work with her who showed her the ropes. Hobby and Jen. Both seem sweet enough. Her uncle and Bernard are making their rounds, eventually making their way to her workstation. Hi, Santa, her colleagues say in unison. She glances up, putting down her card. Hi, she mumbles, rubbing her neck. How we doing, YN? Her uncle asks, hopefully, clapping his hands and rubbing them in anticipation. That is my red pile. This is my list. She mumbles and Bernard gives her a small smile, which she returns. I'm sure she will get faster, Santa. Jen reassures and YN furrows her brows. What? I've been making great time. Look at my pile. You're doing fine, YN. Elves just work differently than humans. So I am sure your co-workers do not mean to be so sarcastic. Bernard comforts, glaring at your co-workers. Her uncle nods along, and they keep walking. Thanks. She grumbles, picking up her letters again. Wow, Jen whispers to herself. What? Wyan asks, setting the letter down again. Nothing, just Bernard really must like you. I mean, look at your red pile. You've barely read 300. Sarcasm and annoyance drips from Jen's voice all caked in fake honeyness. You know, for a Christmas elf, your kind of suck, Wyan mumbles, making the elves around her gasp. What? She asks, looking around. Does she not? She asks, looking around. Her uncle and Bernard come back, their hand with hands on their hips. What is going on over here? Bernard <laughs> What is going on over here? Bernard asks, looking at the elves. They all look toward the ground, scratching the back of their necks. Sighing, YN tells them what she said. But that does not get that kind of reaction. You'd think I stabbed her in the eye with a candy cane or something. Bernard sighs and lowers his voice, a little gentler than it was with the others. We try to keep a positive mindset and attitude toward ourselves and others. Hey, tell that to the jolly green jerk over there. I didn't do anything. Her uncle sighs. YN, can I see you in my office? She rolls her eyes but nods, following him to his office. Chapter 4 She sat in her uncle's office, flashback of getting called to the principals flashing in her head. Why, Ann, it's only the middle of the day, he grumbles and Bernard paces behind her. Look, I didn't mean to, it just slipped out. I mean, I'm right, I, I get I'm not an elf, but seriously, don't blame your suckiness on Bernard. Bernard stops pacing and locks eyes with Santa. What do they blame me for? No, not blaming you. Just the way you were so polite to me. And I guess that's not normal. So I told her she sucked. I didn't mean to. Just said it. Scott laughs dryly. Bernard, there anywhere we can put her? Maybe letters aren't for her. Bernard thought for a second. Before he could say anything, YN piped up. Look, I like it here. But maybe this isn't for me. I mean, I'm not an elf. I'm not sweet. Let's just throw in the towel. Hey, come on, don't think like that. 
I'll send you to the kitchens. There you'll cook the big guy cookies. Bernard encourages, kneeling down next to her chair. It's the first day. Don't give up. Scott looks at them with a twinkle in his eye, recognizing the look of admiration in their eyes. He has the same look with his wife. Okay, but I'm not an elf. You'll do great. What if I don't? Then we will find another retching job you can do. They gaze at each other for a second, just admiring the other. Santa clears his throat. He's right. Take the day off, both of you. Bernard, show her the sights. Sir, I can't. The shop. The shop can last another day. Go. That's an order. They nod and walk out of the office. Where to? She asked, and he takes a deep breath. We'll have you had lunch yet? She shakes her head, and he smiles and offers his arm. Then it's lunch! They sit together in the cafe, drinking cocoa and eating in a comfortable silence. He finishes first and looks around, admiring the snow. Then started admiring the way the snow landed in her hair. Then he started to admire her. You're staring, she notes, taking a sip of cocoa. Sorry, he mumbled, but doesn't look away. Why are you here? he asked, leaning his elbows on his table. What do you mean? Well, you're on the naughty list. Why? She nods. That's a long story. We have all day, he notes, making her sigh. I wasn't always on the naughty list. I used to be sweet, kind. Since my parents divorced last Christmas, I don't, I don't know. Just wasn't the same. Christmas wasn't the same. Mom stopped coming around so much. Then she stopped completely. Stopped trying, stopped having a filter, stopped being sweet. I hit a guy. Bernard eyes widen, which makes her giggle. Not hard, but he was picking on this kid and I just did it. He nods and she looks down with sad eyes. Bernard takes her hand from across the table. I think you are sweet. You don't know me, she scoffs. I'll change that, he mumbles, getting up, holding out his hand. What about paying? Oh, we don't have money at the pole. That's a human thing. They walked around the North Pole for hours, the sun soon setting. And they walked, arm's length, down the main street sidewalk. Carol of the Bells plays softly from the street speakers as they walked. The street started to get more and more crowded as the workday ended. Why, Anne? Yes? You know your mom not being around is not your fault, right? She looks down and he puts a reassuring hand on her shoulder. Because it's not. You're not responsible for her action. Just your own. She looks up with tears in her eyes. It doesn't feel that way. She mumbles. Her sad voice made his stomach drop. Oh, snow angel. He mumbled as he pulled her into a hug. Her cold nose burring in her neck as he wrapped her in a hug. He rubbed circles on her back as he comforted her. Chapter 5 I'm sorry, I barely know you and I'm crying on your shoulder, she mumbled, trying to pull away, but Bernard's arms naturally fell to her hips. Their breathing goes still as they gaze at each other, their noses barely touching. She tilts her head and he is fighting everything in in not to lean down and kiss her. Why, N? he whispers barely. Only she can hear him. It feels like it's only them. It feels like the world has gone still. I can't, he forces out, shutting his eyes tightly. What? I can't, you're upset, and I'm not taking advantage of you like that. He lets her pull away more, and he can't bring himself to look in her eyes. Oh, is all she said for a moment. And he didn't know what to say. She didn't know what to say. I just can't do that to you. You deserve better, and, and I'm the head elf. I work directly with your uncle, and it would be disrespectful to him, not only you, and Bernard. She interrupted. I understand. Thank you for being so considerate. She takes a step back. His hand goes to hold hers, but it does little to stop her. Good night, Bernard. See you tomorrow, she mumbled, and he felt her hands leave his. Good night, Wyan, he mumbled, although she was already gone. He walks in the other direction, heading to his home. Once she gets to her cabin, she sees a big red box with a bow on it. She closes her door, resting her head on it, as she kicks off her shoes. Great, she grumbles as she walks to the back of her small cabin. Down the short hallway, walking to her bedroom, setting the box on her bed. It was big wool blanket, with a note on top. Dear Wyan, hope these keep you a little warmer. Love, Bernard. She smiles sadly to herself, wrapping the blanket around her, laying down on her bed, staring up at her ceiling. He walked to his small cabin by the edge of the village, shutting his down-closed, sighing as he rested his head on the door. I'm an idiot, he mumbled as he pushed off his shoes, setting his hat on the hook. He made a small fire like he did every night, 
sitting on his sofa, watching the fire burn. He looks up at his ceiling with furrow brows. He sits, and he sits, and he ponders what he's feeling. He's never been good with his own feelings. No matter what he does, no matter what he thinks, his mind goes back to her. Her smile, the look in her eyes when she is telling you a story. Pull yourself together, Bernard, he mumbled as he dragged his hands across his face, finally giving in, laying down on his sofa, falling asleep. Chapter 6 Bernard debated on meeting Wyan before work, but he decided against it, thinking it would be better if he let leaved things alone for a second of two. He walked into the workshop, and he sees her already heading towards the kitchen. Everything in him is saying to run to her. All he wants to do is talk to her. He walks up the stairs to his office, glancing down at the elves already busying themselves with their jobs. Morning, Curtis says cheerfully as they walk into Santa's office together. What? Curtis asked when Bernard didn't answer him. Nothing, Bernard mumbled, pushing open the heavy doors to his boss's office. Good morning, Santa calls, and Bernard nods and sits down in one of the chairs. You okay? Scott asked, and Bernard nodded and went on to go about the daily agenda. They went on with their meeting, and the boys kept glancing at Bernard with confused gazes. I think that wraps it up, Curtis mumbles, closing his binder, tucking it in his arm. Bernard, are you doing okay? Santa asks. Yes, sir, he answered with almost no emotion. You know what, boys? I think we should do our rounds. Rounds? Sir, we only just started an hour and a half ago. Santa ignores him and signals for Bernard to follow him to the workshop. They make their usual rounds, and they stop for the kitchen's last. A sad smile appears on Bernard's face as he watches her voluntarily help a fellow cook get some sugar. She was covered in flour, and she snags softly to the holiday music playing. Hey, kiddo, Santa calls as he walks to the counter. Hi, she smiles, but it falters when she sees Bernard. Scott glances in between them, and Bernard's heart goes into his stomach. How are the kitchens treating you? Her uncle asked, snacking a cookie from her tray. I think I'm doing okay, but it really is a Missy question. Santa looks toward Missy, who is the head of the kitchen. She's doing a lovely job. Here, try his, she says, presenting them with a plate of cookies. The boys take a bite, and they all look toward her with wide eyes. That's delicious! Curtis raves, getting another. That tastes familiar. Is that your grandmother's recipe? Y.N. nods, and he has a big smile on his face now. Man, I've not had Mom's cookies in forever. There is spot on, too. Good job, kiddo. She wears a small smile, and Bernard mumbles. They're great. Good job. Thank you, she mumbled, cutting the cookies. The awkward stale between them is evident. Scott excused them and took Bernard back to his office. Curtis, a minute, please. He nods and walks out with a handful of cookies. What happened? I almost kissed Y.N., Bernard answered immediately, and Scott stared at him, processing. You almost kissed my niece? He nodded, winced at what might happen. I see. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't, but you wanted to. He nodded again, and Scott sat in his chair. I'm not mad, Bernard. I knew you had feelings for her. You do? How? He laughs dryly, but Bernard seems completely serious. You two look at each other like there's nothing else in the world. Let me guess... When you look at her, time stops. She's all you can think about. The idea of even coming close to hurting her hurts you. He nods, and Scott signals for Bernard to sit down. How do you? I know, Bernard, because that's what it's like with Mrs. Claus. They sat in silence for a minute, Bernard just waiting for Santa to speak. Why? What? Why didn't you kiss her? He explained the situation with a heavy heart, and Scott only nodded and listened. You're a good guy, Bernard. If anyone, I'm glad it's you she has feelings for. Chapter 7 The end of the day bell rings, and all the elves retire into the night. Y.N. stays behind and cleans up the kitchen. She's walking out, her legs tires from standing all day. A loud crash from upstairs. Stars startles her. Son of a nutcracker! She hears Bernard yell from his office. She runs up the stairs to his office. You, okay? She asks, slightly out of breath. Yes, I just spilled my paint is all. She nods and grabs one of the towels he was using and helped him clean up. Thank you, he mumbled. She hummed, and they sat in more than familiar silence, cleaning the paint. 
After a few minutes, he breaks the silence. I did want to kiss you. What? Last night, if it was another circumstance, I would have. She nods and then asks, would this circumstance count? She was quiet, just above a whisper. He put down his rag and reaches over and takes hers. Tossing it aside, he cups her cheeks, leaning in just above her lips. Their nose is touching again. That depends on, do you want me to kiss you? She nods, and he leans in, a light kiss. His left hand leaves her cheek and drops to her hip, bringing her closer. It was firework. Neither of them has ever experienced anything like it. He didn't think he would ever feel this for someone. Now, he believes he would only feel this for her. A distinct animal cry distracts her from the kiss. She pulls away abruptly. What? He asks, huskily. Whoa. <laughs> Do you hear that? The animal cries again. It's an animal. They could be hurt. She mumbles and takes his hand and leads him outside. Girl, now is not the time to be fawn the animal fairy. I am just saying. The animal cries again, and she takes one of the lanterns walking to the woods. Wait, he calls, grabbing her free hand. Wait, why are there woods in the North Pole? What are you doing? There is an animal out there who could be hurt, she answers simply, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Or it's looking for its dinner. Besides, the wind is picking up. It's too dangerous. Let's get you home. The animal cries again as she shakes her head, walking into the woods. Why, Anne? You can come with me or you can stay. I'm not leaving them. She wanders deeper into the woods, Bernard close behind, watching her back as she focuses on the noise. They search and search. The wind begins to howl as they wander deeper into the woods. You are not used to this weather. Come on. There, she calls, running to a baby polar bear all alone. Oh, shiver, what's up, girl? Doubt that, he answers. She shoves the lantern in his hands, reaching for the polar bear. The closer she got, the closer she could see the mother bear. Unconscious, she appears to be dead. She baby bear cries, and she pick it up. She's hungry. She holds the animal close, pulling it away from the mother. Poor thing. She turns back to Bernard. His face contorts to horror. Why, Anne, you're getting blue. Come on. You have the bear. Let's go. She nods, and he wraps his arms around her, and they walk back. Her legs started to get colder and colder. Soon most of her weight was on Bernard. They walk to the stable, the warm air rushing over them. She sets the bear down and goes to find some meat for it to eat. She loses her balance and falls. The bear cries and Bernard turns away from the door, searching for her. He runs over to her and picks her head up, bringing it to his lap. Why, Anne? Chapter 8 Why, Anne? He takes off his jacket and put it over her. Come on, Snow Angel, open your eyes. Please, I'm sorry. He mumbled. He kisses her head. The reindeer start to howl at the sight. Comet, go get help. Anyone, go now. Comet stands back and runs and hops over his stable, running to the door, hitting the lock a few times, breaking it. Nudging the door open, Bernard hears his bells ring as he goes down the village. The other reindeer ring their bells, kick the wood, anything they can do to make noise. Everything is going to be okay. I got you. Just open your eyes. Tears started to swell in his eyes. He brought her closer, trying to get as much heat as possible for her. She felt like ice, and he felt like it was his fault. He begged for her to open her eyes. Soon the Clauses, Curtis, and the doctor came rushing in. Bernard, what happened? We were cleaning, and she heard the bear cry. She wanted to save it. I told you it was dangerous. She didn't care. I should have fought her on it. I should have dragged her out of those woods, he cried, burying his head in her hair. I'm sorry. It's okay, Bernard. It's going to be okay. Everybody needs to calm down. Take a chill pill, Bernard. The doctor tried to take her from him, but Bernard held her tighter. Sir, I need to see her, the doctor said, taking her from him gently. Mrs. Claus held him, wrapping her arms around his shoulders. We need to get her home. She needs to be in a stable, warm environment. They cautiously take her back to her cabin. Bernard holds the bear in his hands. Sitting by her bed, guilt stormed in him as he watched the doctor work. Color was starting to rise back in her cheeks. Bernard, it will be okay. You did your best. Trust me, I know how stubborn she can be, Scott reassured, putting a hand on her shoulder. When she was seven, she was determined to give a kid a Christmas present. He didn't have a lot of money, and she knew he wouldn't have a lot that year. 
She snuck out and rode her bike across town just to give it to him. She used to be so unstoppable. She was starting to act like her old self again. Scott kneeled down, coming to eye level with the elf. That's because of you, Bernard. He finished, giving Bernard's shoulder a pat, turning to go and talk to the doctor. She stayed in bed for three more days. The whole time Bernard didn't leave her, making sure the fire stayed strong and that she was warm. He would send Curtis out to get fish for her bear, who would stay on the bed with her, laying his head on her lap. He made sure the cabin stayed tidy. He would give Curtis orders to tell the other elves from the cabin. Scott and Carol came by a couple times checking in on her. They would have their morning meetings in her living room. The sun was going down on the third day, and Bernard was fixing the blankets that the bear would shuffle around. As he was fixing the wool blanket he made her, she started to turn slightly, her eyes trying to flutter awake. He sat in the stool he set up by her bed, holding her hand. "'Come on, Snowflake,' he mumbled, pushing the hair out of her eyes. "'Bernard!' she whimpered, holding his hand a bit tighter. "'I'm here. Can you open your eyes?' She nodded slightly, opening her eyes, fluttering open. He smiled from ear to ear. They looked at each other with hopeful eyes. "'Hi,' she mumbled, petting the bear's head. "'Hi,' he answered, scooting closer to the bed. "'You kept him,' she mused as the bear came closer to her, laying his head on her stomach. "'Well, he is yours. I couldn't just leave him alone now, can I?' She giggled, holding his hand tighter. "'How you feeling?' "'I'm cold,' she whispered, getting up to go and make sure the fire is still strong. She held his hand tightly before he could go anywhere. "'Lay with me?' she asked in a sugary voice. That always melted Bernard. Chapter 9 "'Snow Angel, please,' she begged, bringing his hand towards her. "'You're warm,' she mused with a small smile. He sighs and nods, crawling next to her and etching under the covers. She laid on his chest, playing with the hem of his sweater. He ran his hands through her hair, kissing her hairline every now and then. "'What are you going to name your bear?' he whispered, now knowing if she is awake or not. "'Templeton,' she said without hesitation, making him laugh. "'What?' she asked, looking into his eyes. "'Templeton? Where'd you come up with that?' She shrugs and pats her hip, signaling for Templeton to lay there. I don't know. It fits him. Templeton it is. They laid together, their eyes closed, neither asleep, just resting, relishing in the moment, being together. I never want to leave, she whispered, nuzzling her head in the crook of his neck. I never want to leave you, she whispered, kissing his cheek. Then don't. Stay with me. Be with me, he answers, opening his eyes. He turns his arms, falling to the sides of her head. Stay with me. You're happy. I'm happy. He reasons. Their eyes search the others. His lips hover over hers. Can I even do that? She asks softly. He nods and leans in, kissing her. It would be perfect. You would work in the kitchens. We could be together. Just you, me, and Templeton. He mused, kissing her neck. What about my dad? He pauses, forgetting about that one variable. Well, we could visit him, or we could give you and him a snow globe, like Charlie and your uncle, he thinks out loud. Why, Anne, I have never felt this way about anyone. I, I don't want to go without you, he uttered, kissing her cheek. She nods. I don't want to hurt him. I don't think you will. Look, I'll talk to your uncle about it. Just please don't give up on the idea. I won't. He lays back down at her side and she nuzzles back into his neck. He held her tightly. Anxiety of having to let her go burns in his mind. He sits and ponders for a moment, her breathing still and shallow. She's asleep. He could go with her, he muses, glancing down at her. If he can bring the idea of her coming to another world, then it is perfectly reasonable of him to do it too. Chapter 10 She was making her cookies sending the batches down the line for them to be packaged. She was lost in her own world, happily whisking and cracking eggs. He watched her on the terrace, admiring her. The confidence she held in the kitchen over the few weeks she has been working in them. The Christmas season was halfway complete, and he should be running around with his head cut off. He took a pause in that for a moment, when he saw his snowflake. 
laughing and helping the other elves. It's hard to believe she came here on the naughty list, and now she's the most cheerful of them all. Bernard, glad you're here, Santa said, patting his back, startling him. Yes, sir. He shoved a part of the naughty and nice list in Bernard's face. Look! He glanced down and Santa pointed to her name, a capital P next to it. She's on the nice list. Bernard wanted to sound happy, he really did. It was just that now she was on the nice list. She would have to leave. What's wrong? This is what we wanted. Yeah, you're right. I am so proud of her. Scott gave him a knowing look. You're sad she is leaving. Bernard nods and looks at her, helping package the cookies. I just wish she could stay. Santa looked down and then looked toward his niece. He hadn't seen her smile like that since her mom left. He had never seen Bernard smile like that. Through the weeks, he noticed how they changed each other for the better. Does she know? Bernard defeatedly asked. No, I thought you would want to tell her. He nods and hands him back the list. Walking down the stairs and shuffles over. Hey, Snowflake. He gains her attention, her smile faltering when she sees his tight one. What? Did Curtis say something? I keep telling you to just ignore his silly comments. She chuckles, going back to piping a cookie. He holds her hand, taking the piping back and setting it aside. What? You're on the nice list, he says glumly, and her shoulders slouch. Oh, well that's good, right? He nods. But you're sad. He nods. You don't need to remember who you are anymore. You found her. And I'll have to go home? He closes his eyes tightly as she sighs. I thought we would have till Christmas. I thought I had time to figure out a plan, a reason for you to stay. Her lower lip quivers slightly. Oh, snow angel, he murmurs, coming around and hugging her tightly. The elves around them have to take a second glance. Bernard is not the PDA type. He barely shows any other emotion than stress this time of year. I'm sorry, but I'll figure it out, I promise, he said sternly, wiping the tears from her cheeks. Okay? She nods, and he kisses her forehead. Santa watched the couple, his heart clenching when he saw him hug her. He walked back to his office and looking at his list. Seeing his niece's name on the nice list made his heart swell. In the back of his mind, though, was a hesitance. She was so happy here. She is happy with him, and she is happy, and he is happy with her. Hey, Judy! A long, dark-haired elf walked in with a bright smile. Yes, Santa? Would you tell the stables I need Prancer ready for a trip? She nods and walks out with her hands behind her back. Chapter 11 He walks to the stables, Curtis not far behind him. Sir, Christmas is almost here. Where are you going? I have to see my brother, Curtis. I need to talk to him. It's important. Scott calls, getting on Prancer's back, dashing away, leaving a confused Curtis. He flew throughout the night and finally landed at his brother's house. Anxiously, he knocked on the door. Scott? Hey, Jake, can I come in? He opens the door, slightly stunned, to see his brother this close to Christmas. What's wrong? Is Wyan okay? She's good. Better than good, actually. She's on the nice list. His brother's eyes widened, and a smile grew. Yeah, she's back to her old, happy, sweet, laughing self. Jake sighed in relief and mumbled, Thank you, Scott. I could never do it without you. Scott chuckled dryly, fiddling with his ring. Well, that's the thing. I didn't do it. I wish I could take credit, but it was Bernard, our head elf. He really cares for her. Cares? Scott sighs, rubbing his eyebrow in a nervous habit. Well, they, well, they have been. Scott takes a deep breath. They're in love, Jake. You should see it. They're so perfect together. It really is real what they have. My daughter fell in love with an elf while she was staying with her uncle, who is Santa. Jake summed up, dumbfounded. Scott nodding along. Yeah, and the problem is that she has to come home. She is no longer on the naughty list. There is nothing for her to do. Jake sat down on his couch, dumbfounded. Scott, I don't know how I feel about this. He mumbled, running a hand through his hair. What if he gets bored and leaves her? What then? Does she stay there? Does she run home when things get bad? I would never do that, Bernard yelled from the door, shaking off his boot from the snow. Bernard, what are you doing here? 
Curtis came to me freaking out because Santa left, so I thought I would see what was going on. How you doing? Bernard asked Jake, who was looking at him with wide eyes. You're Bernard? Yeah, and I would never get bored of YN. To even insinuate. Bernard, where's YN? She's in her cabin, packing and crying her poor eyes out. Jake stands up and walks over to Bernard, looking him up and down with furrowed eyes. Would you take care of her? I do and will. Do you love her? More than you could ever know. I just want her happy. Scott grabbed his brother's arm and moves him to look at him. Jake, Bernard helped her go back to who she was. Maybe they can learn who they will be. Together. Jake takes a step back and thinks to his failed marriage, how his daughter was. All she wanted was her happiness. And now he is looking at her happiness in his eyes. His mind goes blank. He knew she would have to leave the nest. Now he just has to trust that she will fly back to see him every now and again. With a heavy heart, he sighs, nodding. She can stay, just take care of her. With everything in me, Bernard answers. His heart beats faster as he turns to Scott, who is already smiling. Thank you, Jake. Scott says, giving his brother a hug. Just make sure she knows she's always welcomed home. They nod, and Bernard turns to Santa. Meet you at the office? He asks, and Scott nods, before Bernard snaps his fingers and disappears. Jake gapes at the sight, watching the glitter fall to his ground. I know it takes some getting used to, Scott says, patting his brother on the back. Chapter 12 Bernard appears in her living room. Templeton jumped on his leg, asking to be picked up. Sighing, he picks up the baby bear and walks and walking to her bedroom. She was sniffling and packing and trying to close the suitcase. He puts down Templeton and puts a hand on the case. Wait, he murmurs, and she hugs him immediately. Where did you go? she asked solemnly. I went to find your uncle. He left. Where to? Your dad's? What is he doing there? Is he okay? Yeah, he is fine. We talked to him about you staying. YN pulled away, looking at Bernard in anticipation. So, unpack, because I'm not letting you go anywhere. She looks at him with wide, teary eyes. I can stay! Bernard nods, and she kisses him passionately. He holds her tightly, picking her up off the ground and spinning her. They fall onto the bed, giggling, as she kisses his cheeks. I can't believe I'm staying, she cries, burying her head in Bernard's neck. I love you, he whispers. I love you, too, she whispers back, pecking his lips. I love you so much. They laugh as they hold each other, the suitcase getting knocked off the bed in a small clatter. A loud knocking at the door interrupts them, and Bernard groans, resting his head in the nook of her neck. Bernard, Curtis yells, his voice muffling from the door. Can I ever get a minute? He groans, making Wyan laugh. Maybe if we're quiet, he'll go away, Bernard proposes. For a few seconds, they sat in a tense silence. Another loud bang came from the door. Jingle bells, Curtis, I'm coming, he called, and kissing his snowflake on the cheek. Taking a deep breath, he opens the door, and Curtis flies in. Yes, Curtis? Bernard, guess what? What? Wyan is on the nice list. Isn't that great? Bernard rests his head on the door and shuts his eyes. Yes, Curtis, we already knew that. You did? Yesterday. Curtis makes an O oh face, and Wyan walks out of the bedroom, Templeton in hand. Hi, Curtis. Hi, Wyan. I'm sorry to hear about you having to go and all, but hey, you're on the nice list. Isn't that great? She giggles and sets Templeton down to go and eat his dinner. Curtis, I'm staying. Bernard and Uncle Scott talked it over with my dad. This is great! Bernard watches them with a smile, making talking signs with his hands, making YN laugh. Well, thank you for stopping by, Curtis, but I'm afraid we were just on our way out. We were? YN asks, and Bernard nods. We have a date to get to, and if the workshop is on fire or someone is dead, call me. If not, call Santa. Bernard instructs, pushing Curtis out of the door. He can never get a hint, he jokes, holding her hips. Be nice. He means well. So, we're going on a date? He nods and tells her to get her coat. Together they walk through the woods, hand in hand, coming to a cliffside. 
What are we doing? she asks, and he points up at the sky. The northern lights dance in the sky. She stands gaping at them. The hues of green and purple dance in the sky. Is it in the sky, though? I don't know if it's in the sky. It's beautiful, she says in awe, eyes never leaving the lights, his never leaving her. The most beautiful thing here. She turns to him and rolls her eyes. You're not even looking. I got a little distracted, he murmurs, bringing her close. Their kiss stopped time. The chill of the cold left them. They were together, and they knew they weren't going to leave the other. Poets write about the kind of love they have. They knew that. They cherished each other. They needed to each other like they needed air. I love you, they whispered, turning to the northern lights, holding each other close. The end.